welcome to the Scratch Kiss Academy. We are back with something a little bit different today, which is something I'm very excited about playing. Um, so um, first of all, before I hand over to the very lovely Heavenly, please check out the links coming up in the chat. It includes Discord. There isn't a channel for this um, game. There is for the Hikigard, but I would like to hear what you think about this game in the Hikigard, um, either way. Um, we. Um, Sadly, it's only coming to the end of this season, but that does mean a new season is on the way. If you would like to get in a game and play, please drop Scratch DM on Twitter. Um, and also, if you have missed out on anything, we have all of our games in playlists over on the YouTube. Um, otherwise, a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors who we couldn't do this without in the form of Mayhem Press. If you like D&D and you love space, you smush them together and you get their dark matter. They have loads of other um, as well that you can see played on Mage and Mondays. I think they're currently on Pirates. It's happy Pirate shenanigans, so please go check that out. Also, the wonderful Hero Forge, who's ever you would have seen it played just in the load-up screen. They have, I think, smashed the two million goal now. Um, something like that. Um, which is incredible. They're doing kobolds and all of these extras that are coming out as we keep smashing goals. Also, last but certainly not least, the deck of many, the deck of many things, the moving magic spell cards, which are a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, and also Humblewood, which I've been told may be coming uh, in campaign form next season. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to Heavenly. Oh, hi. Hello, everyone. We are going to be playing a very silly little one shot called, oh, dang. Bigfoot stole my car with my friend's birthday present inside. I'm feeling a little under the weather, so we decided to just do a very quick session of something super silly that we're gonna kind of come up with on the fly. Everyone went ahead and rolled their characters already, so let's let's set the scene. You all are going to your friend's birthday party. Your friend's name is Clementine Smart Mouth. <laughs> and you've decided to carpool to be environmentally friendly, obviously. And on the way there, as you uh, have your presents stacked high in the back of the car, one of you realizes that you have forgotten to buy a card. Which one do you think is most likely to have forgotten to buy a card? Uncle Ted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All of them. I'm, I'm, I'm very responsible. So. Everyone rolls their hand. So everyone, you realize at the very last minute that you have forgotten to buy a card. It wouldn't have been a problem if only one of you had forgotten because then you could have just signed someone else's card and put it in two for one. But since you've all forgotten, you have to stop. Um, you pull up to just one of those little side of the road gas stations thinking that you'll just buy some cheap Hallmark card. And as you walk into this gas station, I want you to explain your characters. Let's start um, looking at my cameras going down. Let's start with D. Hey, stick around. <laughs> I might be able. Hi. Um. Well, I'm. I, you know. Uh. This is an eclectic-looking girl. Hair sort of up and frizzy. She's got like all of these wild patterns. A sweatshirt and some baggy pants that are in completely different color patterns and clash. And. It's just, I'm just looking around the store trying to find like the perfect card for Clementine. <laughs> and you know, no, I, I just want something that speaks to her essence. That would be very cool. For just my own records, could you mm -hmm. tell me um, your, your character style and their role? She's our wacky investigator. Love that. I'm searching right. real hard for that card. And close behind her as you enter into this the store is Alonzo Lethbridge. I'm yes. is that the full name or is it cut off on my screen? Uh, it's Alonzo, sorry, Alonzo Lethbridge. Lethbridge, cool. Uh, as he walks in, you see a very tall, athletic, uh, not like beefy muscular, but very toned, like a, probably more like a basketball player or a sprinter instead of a football player. Uh, he's wearing a light zip-up hoodie with a tank top underneath and some basketball shorts and some high-top sneakers. He looks around kind of confused like he's never been in a store before, but he's probably just a little slow. Uh, he's looking around like, where would the cards even be? And he ends up in like mm -hmm. the chip aisle or something. All right, and uh, third in line is Margot. Oh, and Alonzo, you're a brawn athlete. 
Yes, Braun Athlete. That is correct. Sorry. Margo? Um, Margo is the um, the brains um, and also the driver. Um, she has um, been put in um, charge of borrowing someone else's car. So she's trying to be very, very responsible and make sure she looks after it. She's pretty um, organized most of the time, can be a bit scatterbrained, but she knows what she's doing. She's very, very tall, very, very lanky. Um, she tends to wear um, sort of jeans, long sleeve t-shirt, cardigan that is normally buttoned up and just like a, um, a little um, sort of definitely homemade bobble hat. So it's a bit wonky, it's a bit all over the place, but she walks around very upright and she finds the cards almost immediately, but she tends to pick out four or five and is trying to pick which one. Okay, so it sounds like Margo, you and Destroya are quite close to one another. You were able to sleuth the proper location for the cars, whereas Alonzo is, is kind of wandering around. And Uncle Ted, you come in last. And, and tell us a little bit about Uncle Ted. Okay, so Uncle Ted is apparently the wise face hero. Um, <laughs> we're gonna see how many of those things really prove true here. I'm gonna change that number up now, now that I said that out loud. Um, yeah, and what did we wanna know next about Uncle Ted? We wanna know what he looks like. Yeah, so Uncle Ted has got a little bit of hair still on top of his head, but not a lot. He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt and he is here pretty much for the party part of the birthday party. Um, very relaxed, no muscle tone whatsoever, wearing flip-flops and cargo shorts in addition to this Hawaiian shirt. Okay, easy peasy. So the players have already chose their character style and their role. They've also chosen a number from two to five. The higher the number, the more patient they are. The lower the number, the more reckless they are. So that'll come into play in roles. And they should have also written down what their present was, but we can leave that to another time. And as the four of you wander in, there is a rather bored looking teenager leaning against the counter with a magazine open in front of him. And as you all take your time, he looks up and says, can I help you with anything? Um, I would like to buy these five cards, please. And I sort of just push them neatly across the, across the counter. Yeah, hi, I found this one. It's not quite a card. It's like, um, it's, it's really like a couple of note cards and a flower that I found because I think I'm going to like make them kind of stick together into like some sort of card because that really spoke to me about and like felt like a Clementine kind of card. So that's what I'm purchasing. Um, okay, is this together or separate? I think I got like three dollars on it. I've got. I mean, I can pay for mine. I don't know if I've, I've got I don't mine. Know if I it's all good. It's okay. fine. I saved. It's fine. Like it's just as she sort of awkwardly pushes okay. that, and the money in the exact change placed on top, almost all squarely and lined up across the counter. Yeah, the cards are a dollar each, but it's like buy four get one free. So it's only four dollars for five cards, and he scans your card and and tells you your total. And then ask, do you want a bag? It's 10 cents if you want a bag. Um, no, 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 you know, save the environment and everything. This is all good. Cool. He holds his hand out for the money. Yes, cool. And sort of puts the money in his hand. And she's like trying to be cool and she's really not. So Dee, you've just chosen like little tiny note cards. They're not like birthday cards. Correct. And you found the flower like on the ground or is it like a flower from the store? <laughs> Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like it was like on a display or something. Okay. <laughs> he scans the three note cards. They're a little cheaper. They're going to be just $2 for the three of them. Uh, but he looks at the flower a little confused and he was like, he says, where did you get this? We don't sell flowers. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I found it somewhere over back there. <sighs> All right. And he puts it on the stack of cards and says, $2, do you want a bag? A bag will cost 10 cents. Oh, I, I don't need a bag. I can carry it and it will infuse my love into these cards and, and give him uh, two of the like Sakagawea dollars. Okay. 
He looks at you a little disgruntled, but opens the cast register and, and puts them in. Alonzo, Uncle Ted, have you, um, are you still wandering around the store? Is there, are there any snacks you guys want to get? I'm, I'm good. I have a bag of trail mix in one of these pockets. Okay. Um, hey, Margo. Margo. Yes. Which one was your second favorite card? Um, which was like your second choice? And she starts to like spread them out. And then it's like, second Thank favorite. Thank you. That's oh. perfect. Okay. That, that's That'll a work. Okay. I'll get, I'll get the next one. <laughs> and she sort of, she puts these other cards into a real deep pocket in her bag. <laughs> Alonzo, what are you up to? Uh, I think I would have stared at the chips for far too long while everything was happening at the cash register. And at the last moment as they were leaving the store, I realized that they're about to leave me behind and just ran out with them. Nothing, not grabbing anything from the store. All right, as you all exit the store, um, I'm going to assume the order is probably Margo, D, Uncle Ted, Alonzo. Maybe Margo and D are, are in close quarters. And as you exit the store, Margo, you reach into your pocket to get the, the car keys and you realize that you don't have them. And as you realize this, you hear the sound of the car starting up and you see this car that you have borrowed pulling out of the parking spot and driving away. And Dee, as Margo was noticing that the car is stolen, you realize that the person who is driving the car is not a human, it's Bigfoot. <gasps> Someone just stole my cousin's car. Oh my gosh, they let me have this on my. I promised I'd look at it. just anybody. It wasn't just anybody. It wasn't just anybody. I don't care who stole it. Someone stole the car. You don't understand. Oh, they need a haircut. That that wasn't just anybody. That that was Bigfoot. Whoever it is, it's rude and it is my cousin's car. You don't understand. Bigfoot doesn't exist. Drive on, man. That's not how you do that. Bigfoot's not real. Oh the gosh, Sasquatch, also known as the Bigfoot, is absolutely real. Nah, it's just fairy tales. Why is no one else panicking that the car is gone? The present is in the car. Oh, oh no! Just, um, just now call we the supposed to get on your party. on your cell phone. Call the police on your cell phone. You have a cell uh, phone, uh, right? Such a good present too. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And I'd like to like <laughs> rummage around uh, my phone. And being Margo, genuinely probably left it in the car. <laughs> All right, Margo doesn't have her cell phone. Who's going to call the police? Uncle Pete the definitely the left her cell phone in the car. 100%. <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Ted, We've got did, a... you say you, did you say you have a phone, Uncle Ted? Oh, no. I definitely left my phone in the car. What about you? I have my phone, but it's at 5%. I'll call the police, <laughs> but what's the number? Wait, hang on. Are we in America or are we in the UK right now? Yes, you are in America. <laughs> what do you mean? What is the number for the police? Well, I've never you had to call this. the police before. No, but you should know these things. That's what, this is what happens when situations like this happen. Breathe, sure, Marco, you can breathe. call. No, no, I'm, I need to calm and center myself. Breathe, Margo, breathe. And she sort of like squats down and just puts her heads between her knees. Oh, fine. I'll call. I'll okay. take his phone and dial 911. Awesome. So, D, I'm going to have you make a roll. I okay. think that this is going to be a patient roll because you are going to be trying to stay cool and kind of tell the police very specific information. Okie dokie. You're not prepared. Mm. And um, what is your, you're an investigator, right? Yes. I'll say that you are an expert in staying cool. It's kind of part of your job. So you'll get two D6 and because you're being patient, you want to roll under the number that you've chosen. She's four. <laughs> and each uh, each dice, it's not like 10 isn't your total number, it's each, right. each dice. Um, so six and four. I think if it meets it, it beats. That's kind of how I'm rolling it. So one of your dice succeeded, so you're definitely going to be able to scrape by. So you dial 911, you hear Sounds the right. familiar 
The familiar ringing and a voice comes on and says, hello, 911, what is your emergency? Hi. Yeah, so we're outside this, uh, we're outside this store right now and um, our Bigfoot stole our car. I'm sorry, ma'am. What store are you outside of? Where are we? Hey guys, where are we? Margo? We're at Clinton's Cards. We're at Clinton's Cards. We're at Clinton's Cards. Wonderful. Is that the Clinton's card off the Highway 205, ma'am? Margo, are we yeah, off Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it okay. is. Yes, it's that. Yes, correct. You hear typing. And she says, ma'am, was your car just stolen? Did you see it being driven away? Yes, by Bigfoot, specifically. There's a bit of silence as you hear uh, typing. And she says, okay, ma'am, I'm going to need you to stay calm. I would like you to stay on the line with me. Was anyone hey. hurt? Hey, are, were any of you hurt? Anybody? I, 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 I'm stressed. Margo is stressed. Don't let my phone die. Also, the phone's about to die. <laughs> All right, ma'am, please stay with me on the line until the phone dies. I do have a police officer who's on his way. We don't have anything else better to do, so we're taking this very seriously. Uh, there should be someone there in just a few minutes. Thank you. That's very kind and helpful of you. I can tell we're like kindred spirits right now. You're very welcome, ma'am. I'm, I'm so happy to help. Can you tell me how many people there are? And she's just going to be asking you kind of basic questions to keep you preoccupied. And after a few minutes, you see a police car roll up. It doesn't have its sirens on, but it does roll up and pull right in front of you. And a police officer uh, one of them exits out of the car, the other one stays in the car, and one of them says, All right, so your car was stolen? That's correct. All right, okay. the police are here. Can I get off the line? I know. And you can't hang up. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Bye. I hang up and I. How much battery is left on the phone? Probably like 3%. Perfect. Okay, Alonzo. Thank you. All right, uh, can I have a description of the car, please? And he and looks at you, Margo, since you were the one who just spoke. Yes, it's um, it's my cousin's car. Um, it's a blue golf, um, and it's got a really delightful little key ring on the end, but then I don't really know if you're gonna see that via the um, cameras. It's a blue golf, um, and um, I don't know cars, like yay big. And she starts to try and size it up. Real quick, um, Hans just pointed out that if you roll the number exactly, <laughs> you get a happy birthday. So they, you get a special insight into what's going on. You can ask me one question and I will answer honestly. Oh, oh, it's so early. Um, do, the direction that Bigfoot is headed in, is there anything interesting that way that we might know about? Um, that direction would have been going towards uh, a well-known university. Okay. Cool. Sweet. In the opposite direction of Clementine's birthday party. Naturally. Yeah. Uh, Margo, as you're talking to the police officer, he says, okay, and uh, did you see the person who stole your car? Can I get a description? Um, he's very, very tall. Um, probably about um, over like nearly seven foot. He was a very, very tall gentleman, um, very hairy, possibly wearing a wig. Um, I told them on the phone it was Bigfoot because it was Bigfoot. He might respond to Sasquatch better, but Bigfoot. Okay, and he looks at the two of you and continues writing. And as you say that his partner kind of pokes his head out the window and he goes, did you say Bigfoot? Um, no, no, she said Bigfoot. I did. His, his partner's like, not now, Kevin. And Kevin steps down and he was like, did you say you saw Bigfoot? I did. I did. He was big. And hairy. Well, I mean, it was hard to tell because he was sitting in a little car and he was driving it. Wow. But that's big. That's amazing. I know. I know, right? I mean, you saw it too, Ted, right? Uncle Ted, right? Oh yeah, yeah, he needed a haircut for sure. Um, hey, Heavenly, do I have to roll something to know Kevin and maybe be fishing buddies with him? <laughs> um, no, you can you can know Kevin. He looks at you hey, and he's Kevin. like, Do people call you Uncle Ted or they call you Ted? 
Everyone calls me Uncle Ted. Okay, he looks at you and he's like, what's up, Uncle Ted? What are you up to today? You know, I'm taking the day off of fishing to go do a birthday thing. It's a big party. You should go. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Whose birthday is it? Um, Clementine's. I think that's right. Clementine, is that Jared's little girl? Yeah, yeah. Jared's smart mouth? Yeah. That's my track coach. What? <laughs> what a small town we live in. Why is no one panicking that the car is And there's is only gone. two card stores. <laughs> oh, so here, it'll be fine. The police officer who does not seem to be quite as friendly with everyone is looking at you, Margo, and he's like, all right, ma'am, I'm going to put in uh, whatever you put in on cars that were stolen, <laughs> and I'll give you, he writes down on a piece of paper and he rips it off to you, and he says, this is the police number, uh, the, the, the policy, the police report number. I'm going to be honest with you, our recovery rate is pretty abysmal. It's about 20%, so I don't think you're going to see your car again, and you should probably make some plans but as he's talking kevin is like looking and he's shaking his head and he's like man we gotta go get but guys get in the car get in the car i i i i i i can't not bring back my cousin's car excuse me i just sort of tries to slide into the car i'm not gonna let this big hairy bastard roll it ruin <laughs> clementine's birthday can i call shotgun <laughs> yes as long as I don't have to ride in the trunk again. Nope, you'll ride in the back. It would be very illegal for me to put you in the trunk. Seat belts, everyone. Remember your seat belts. Seat belts! I'm gonna <laughs> force like... myself to sitting in the middle with my huge frame taking up a ridiculous amount of space. You so, all pile into the car. Uh, Day, you're up front. D, you're up front. The three of you are in the back. And Kevin climbs into the driver's seat and he pulls away, leading his partner outside of the store. <laughs> and as he's pulling away, his partner, you know, gets on his uh, walkie talkie and he's like, Oh, uh, wait, guys, we got a situation. Uh, Kevin is currently uh, in pursuit of Bigfoot. And as he says that, the store clerk comes out and goes, Bigfoot? But at this point, you all are rocketing down the highway and Kevin turns to you, Dean, and he says, which way did he go? But that way, towards the, the well-known university that I Wonderful. probably went to. <laughs> and he he does this move with the wheel and it makes the car turn really fast and he flips on the lights and you all, you rock it down. So how long have you been a Bigfoot fan? <laughs> oh, well, my whole life. I mean, I grew up here. My grandma saw Bigfoot once. No. Yeah. Back in those days, uh, it was difficult to cook bacon outside because once the Bigfoot would catch the scent of the bacon, he would come and he would ruin any sort of barbecue party you're having. So BLTs were just off the table basically my whole childhood. Catching Bigfoot with bacon. I never would have thought of that. Oh, yeah. He loves the smell of that roasted pork. For some reason, uh, things like sausages, patties they don't really do the same it's bacon he likes that kind of crisp burnt smell i can relate so uh how do you all know clementine uh her dad's my track coach wow crazy i went to school with clementine oh. um I, I i i i i used to babysit oh wow uncle ted how do you know clementine i'm pretty sure she's one of my nieces so I wouldn't be surprised, you old <laughs> dog. <laughs> I've heard stories about Uncle Ted back when he was called Nephew Ted. Catch my drift. <laughs> and as you all are driving, uh, you know, voices come over the speed, the the little car radio, and a woman's voice says, "Attention, all units! Attention, all units! There has been a uh, a a Bigfoot sighting." About ten miles outside the university. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm getting. I'm getting more information. Um, excuse. Attention, all units. There has been a Bigfoot sighting at the Safeway. Um, attention, all units. There has been a. Bi Apparently, Bigfoot is a. Uh, is in. Is in Little Rockford. Um, so I don't know who wants to respond to that. I'm not really sure what to do in this situation. And and Kevin responds and says, "I'm on it, Barb," and he takes off, and the town gets closer and closer. Um, as we approach 
this town, we are going to be reaching the first major stop of our road trip. So everyone is going to take a turn describing something they're trying to do today. Talk, drive, evade authorities, fix a car, and you're gonna roll 1d6. So what does everyone wanna do once we get into town? And this is a small town, you all know this, Little Rockford, it's a, it's a small town. Uh, it's basically just a university town. So the population during the fall is quite large. It's now summertime. So the population's dwindled a bit, but there are a couple of, you know, stalwart residents who have lived there their whole lives. But it's gonna be super small. There's gonna be one grocery store, just a couple of coffee stores, one street that goes through the whole thing. Um, I'm gonna go try and find a, a phone charger. <laughs> okay. There's that like a local store. Too, so. <laughs> like a local store or something, like to plug it into the car. Okay. What did we say oh, that uh, Bigfoot's going to be doing on this APB that we just heard of this like police bulletin? It seems that he stopped at Safeway, which is a grocery store. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm um, going to talk Pitts. to people. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to talk to people and try and find out what they know about Bigfoot. You know, what rumors they've heard about Bigfoot recently. Okay. I'm going to go Alonzo, were you also looking safety. for a phone charger? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I was thinking, uh, since, you know, I'm a known athlete in the town, uh, maybe uh, looking around for some teammates from the area or maybe some local fans who watch uh, school sports okay. and seeing if any of them have, like, a portable power bank or charger. But if she can find one first. All right, and Uncle Ted? Uh, I'm going to go to the Safeway and go to the deli counter to ask them if they've seen Bigfoot. Okay. Everyone roll 1d6. Mm, whose number am I missing? Alonzo? I did not roll. Oh, I think I missed that. There it goes. Perfect. Okay, so Margo, you got the highest number, which means it went well. Um, you are going to be able to get that phone charger. That's a nice thing that you got an item. So you have that, and then later you can spend that item to get an extra 1D on your roll, but right now it's charging the phone. Um, who got the lowest? Mm, D, D, sorry. Uh, so something goes wrong. Um, a wacky problem. So you walk into the Safeway and who's the first person you approach? There are a couple of people shopping, mainly college students. And then there are, there's one cashier. Oh, I'll talk to the cashier. Okay. You approach the cashier. There's no one checking out. So she just kind of stares at you and, uh, and, and waits a beat to see if you're going to speak first. Hi. Hello. Hi. I heard that you've seen Bigfoot. Who told you that? Well, I, so we saw Bigfoot earlier and we've been tracking him. I want to know everything. You've what been did tracking? He, what, yeah. Um I I think that I saw him leaving town. Leaving town? Yes, he was leaving town. Where was he leaving? He was he was going to the airport. He was gonna get on. He was gonna go on a plane. He was gonna leave. Does does he have a ID that he could get on? They're very strict about those things. I don't know. He was gonna go to. He was gonna fly to to South America. I heard. So, Where did stop, did you talk from. to him? No, uh, it's just it's no. Uh, I've never seen before. I just that's what I heard. So, he's leaving. Yeah. So you, should, you should go now too. Also, in the opposite direction of this town, the airport. It's three hours away, so hurry, because traffic stuff. Uh, huh. Yeah. Uh, do I know this cashier? I assume I have met her before. Yeah, she, before you can even really recognize her face, she bolts. She begins to run. 
Hey, wait, wait, where are you going? That woman's fishy, and I'm gonna go chase after her. Okay. Uh, question, whilst I'm charging the phone, my phone is in the car. Can I activate yeah. friend tracker? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I'd like to track my own phone, please. Okay. You turn on Fen Tracker and it asks you for your username. I look over at Alonzo. What's your username? Uh, AL 2007. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And password? Well, let me type that in for you. And it takes me like three tries to type it in. Yeah. <laughs> And you, you, this is a fun new app that exists in this uh, near future where you have apparently access to all of your friends' phones and you can at any time track them. It's called Friend Tracker. My dad and calls it Charlie. It's, yeah. it's never abused. It's never abused. It's only used for tracking friends in situations in which you think there's something wrong. And you are able to select your phone and you turn on the tracking and uh, you see that it's within about a two mile radius of you. Okay, so we, we, we have a two mile radius where Bigfoot, and more importantly, the car is. As you, so Alonzo and Margo, you are in the car, and Uncle Ted, you are in Safeway with, with Day, D. I don't know why yes. I keep on calling you Day. D. <laughs> extra A in there is, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Uncle Ted, as you're going towards the deli counter, you see a cashier running by you, and then you see D right close behind her. The cashier runs out the store doors. Margo and Alonzo, you see the same thing. A cashier run by and then D close behind. Stop her, somebody stop her. She knows something and she's not talking. Yeah, hey, I know somebody who's really fast. <laughs> it just slammed Alonzo, on the car door. Alonzo, get her. <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> yeah, Alonzo, My legs are too short to catch up. If you want to try and catch up to her, I'll have you roll um, 1d6. And I think you're definitely both prepared and an expert since you are athletic and strong and you're always ready to run. So go ahead and roll 3d6. And I definitely think that this is a, a reckless move because you're like, you know, trying to pursue someone. So you want to roll over your number. Uh, my number, by the way, for the record is two. Okay. Cool. So, um, you all get a special insight into what's going on because you rolled exactly your number. Let's do that first because then you can change your action if you want based on my insight and roll again. So, what question do you have? Uh, the clerk who is running, is that someone who probably knows more than what she's telling and I want to stop her? Or is it just somebody of no importance? She absolutely knows more than she's telling. I am gonna get her. Okay. Ain't no stopping and me. You rolled three dice. Three dice succeeded. It's a critical success. The GM tells you some extra effect you get. So you are able to catch up with her quite quickly. You overtake D in a sh just a few short strides, or rather long strides, of your super muscular legs. Do you shave your legs? Is that something that tracks people? Oh, yeah. Do? Every second counts. Yeah, so your you incredibly that smooth legs outpace D very quickly, and you are able to get a hold of this woman. And you don't tackle her, but you are able to kind of put your yourself in front of her so she has to stop. And she isn't able to stop in time. She smacks right into you. And when she smacks into you, uh, her cell phone falls out of her pocket, and you can see that she was FaceTiming with Bigfoot. I think I would probably be more occupied with stopping her and yeah. probably not notice her phone fall. Okay, that's fair. Uncle Ted, um, what were what what was going on for you as you were walking up to the deli counter and you saw this chase begin? What did you do after? Um, I gotta say that Uncle Ted has probably just walked very calmly out to the parking lot behind everybody as this is going on. Um, yeah, he's just gonna pick up anything that got dropped maybe. All right, well, so you walk out and you kind of stroll out very casually. 
and you see just in time for Margot to get out of the car and she's kind of like motioning wildly and Alonzo has taken off and intercepted this woman and you see that her cell phone has fallen to the floor, the woman that has been intercepted. And there is the very familiar, what color is a FaceTime chat screen? It's like green, is it green? Is it blue? Blue, it, I think. Is it black? Standard. I don't even know. The color that, that means that a FaceTime is happening. Uncle Ted, you, you see this on the ground. Okay, so Uncle Ted picks up the phone. Um, as you pick it up, you see a big hairy face uh, and it looks at you with surprise and it goes, oh shit, and then the call just connects. <laughs> Rude, wow. man. I'm going to push the call button again. <laughs> I call it back. Okay. It rings for a little bit, and uh, it picks up as an audio call, not a FaceTime. And you hear a voice say, is that you, Delilah? No, it's Uncle Ted. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Hangs up again. Margaret's like, ring back and pretend to be Delilah. <laughs> I push the button again. Okay. It rings a couple of times, and uh, again, a, a video, uh, an audio picks up, and you hear Delilah. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to have you roll as well. And I think this may be reckless because I think this is smooth talking. Um, he's awesome. talking awesome. Bigfoot. <laughs> Let me see. What are you again? You're the wise am... face. So I, I'll That's say right. that you're an expert, but that you're not prepared. So you get 2d6 and you want to roll over your number. My number for the record is four. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> you... Um, <laughs> You say, yes, this is Delilah, and there's a pause, and the voice goes, oh my gosh, Delilah, it's so good to hear from you. I am i don't know where I'm going. I, I can't find the address that you sent me. Um, I'm gonna have to look it back up. Do you wanna loop back around to the Safeway? You told me not to come back there. You said that someone saw me. They left. It's fine. Oh, okay. Um, oh, actually, no. Wait. I'm going to meet you at the Long John Silver's the f right across the street. All right. That sounds safest. Cool. I'll see you there in a few in a few minutes. And because you only got one dice, there is going to be a complication. And it's as you hang up, Delilah looks at you and she says, you didn't even recognize my voice. I'm really oh. good at this, Delilah. I do this a lot, actually. I'd like to pat her on the back. It's okay. <laughs> I'd like to console Delilah. I'm gonna pull the flower out of my pocket and give it to Delilah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm sorry for running. I just, you know, he's he's like my best friend, and people are always like looking for him, and it's just Aww. upsetting, you know. It's it. You know, we just. I I always thought he was super cool, and you know. People always told me I was weird for thinking Bigfoot was cool. So it's really neat that you like have cultivated this like spiritual bond with him. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And as she's agreeing with you, you all hear the sound of many, many cars pulling up. And you turn to see that this one road through this town is just filled with vans, um, big, big cars, I don't know what type of big SUVs, trucks, and on one of the vans it says History Channel. And the van pulls to a stop in the parking lot and uh, a guy gets out and he has slicked back hair and he's wearing some like dungarees and he has a cowboy hat on and sunglasses. And he gets out of the car and he goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, the Squatch is near. 
I can smell them. And then the the van door rolls open and uh, a very bored looking woman in a suit walks out with a clipboard and then a man holding a big TV camera walks out and they begin to kind of look around the area. But I'm like, this is me and Margo. <laughs> this isn't just, Margo's just like, oh no. <laughs> um, what, what, what do we do? What do we, we can't have them. It's all right, I got this. I'm used to the attention. Wait, wait, you've got to understand. I can't let them see that Bigfoot has stolen my car. My cousin will kill me if they it's video okay. this. It's okay, Bigfoot's not even real. It's okay. I'm pretty sure we've established that Bigfoot is in fact real. Nah, it's just but, a fairy tale. But I don't want you to lose your friendship with Bigfoot. So we're going to help you and not let them near him. Delilah. Okay, so what's the plan? That's a good question. Well, Where I can talk to all the cameras to let them know that Bigfoot's not even real. They can get out of here. It's no big deal. Okay. It's, it's just you an go, overblown. You, you go towards the cameras and what exactly do you say? Uh, I go real personable, like acting like everybody knows my face anyway, so no need for introductions. It's like, hey, it's me, you know, I'm used to being on cameras. Just, you know, it's a big overblown rumor. There's no Bigfoot, just relax. The woman with the clipboard and in the, the pencil skirt kind of looks up at you and she's like, yeah, everyone knows Bigfoot isn't real, but people still watch TV about it. So I don't understand what your point is. He just kind of like gets lost in thought, like he can't come up with a comeback. He's just kind of like, I'm not used to having to think further. The man comes up to you, Alonzo, and he was like, sir, are you a local here? Uh, yeah, I run for a track for the local school and I'm champion in all districts. I'm surprised you don't even know my face. Alonzo yeah. Lethbridge, I'm sure you've okay. heard my name. Tell me, when was Bigfoot first found to be in this location? Did you grow up with stories of him? Bigfoot's not real. It's just fairy tales. Like vampires, they're dwarves. Well, then why do I have insider information that Bigfoot is here in this town and was in fact at the Safeway? You know that there's video recordings of it. Everyone has videos on their cell phones now. It's probably just a tourist stunt. I don't think there are tourists here. Well, it's a nice area. Plenty of camping we have, grounds. We what are the, the other three of you plus Delilah doing at the time? I'm trying to stealth my way over to Long John's or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta say Uncle Ted's probably sneaking along with Delilah to the Long John Silvers across the street. Okay, so three of you are going to Long John Silvers. Uh, Dee, what are you doing? I'm going to like sneak over to, I'm going to come up with Alonzo um, and I'm going to come up to Alonzo and, and the camera people. And I have a confession to make. Oh, wow. Interesting. And he goes, Ted, 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 Ted. And the cameraman comes over and he gets like right <laughs> up in your face. Yes. So honestly, all of that stuff about Bigfoot sightings, it was, it was just a, it was a prank that Uncle Ted was playing on everybody. He was just wearing a wig and took off his... Who, who is Uncle Ted? Is that some sort of local cryptid? Some kind of witch creature? Ghost I mean, maybe? He's, he's Uncle Ted. He's everybody's... Everybody knows Uncle Ted. Why don't you know Uncle Ted? I'm not from here. I'm from the History Channel. And he points oh. to the fan. Oh, yeah, I've watched your stuff sometimes. There's a lot of inaccuracies in the stuff that you make. Um, Ted, like Ted, the Ted, thing Ted, about the Kraken was just the camera turned wrong. To, the camera goes to the ground. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, what was your name? I'm D. Destroy. D, I'm just here trying to make good TV. I don't care if it was just Uncle Ted, who's everyone's uncle, in a wig. The chase, the thrill, the mystery, people will watch it regardless. So can you just point me in the direction of Uncle Ted? Oh, I mean, 
he's headed off towards the airport. It's like three hours from here. Okay. Go ahead and make a roll. Um, I think that this will be a reckless action as well as smooth talking. I'll say that you are prepared because you seem to have this plan in mind. So go ahead and give me two D6. And you want to roll over your number because you're being reckless. Your number was four, right? Oh, we're going to give you so many happy birthdays. Yeah. Um, go ahead and ask me a question. Um, let's see. What do I want to know about... Uh, did, okay, I want to know um, if... Oh, so many thoughts and questions. They're just all floating around in my head. Um, did it seem like Delilah and Bigfoot were maybe more than friends? Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so you, okay. Uh, you tell them that, that Uncle Ted has gone to the airport and they go, perfect. Thank you so much, Ted. D, we will, this is invaluable. This will be such a great shot. And they begin loading up in the truck, but there is going to be a complication harm or or cost because only one guy is defeated. And that is as the gentleman in the cowboy hat is getting into the car, uh, the, the four of you, no, the three of you are, are making your way over to Long John Silver's trying to be stealthy. And as you are going into the parking lot and the Long John Silver's is just across the street from the Stateway. As you are going in towards the the door, a family comes out and one of them goes, Uncle Ted, uh, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. Tell me, how have you been? Just incredibly loud. Uh, Uncle Ted goes over and describes his day in great detail, completely forgetting about all the Bigfoot stuff. Okay. Um, the, the guy in the cowboy hat kind of pauses and he turns and he looks over at the street and sees three of you huddled in the parking lot awkwardly and then he looks over at you Alonzo and D and he says are you lying to me? Oh uh, I mean uh, I, he said he was going to the airport he must have decided that the Long John Silver's was, he needed like sustenance because it's a long trip to the airport. He doesn't seem to buy it and he pounds on the side of the van and the door opens and Ted the cameraman goes out and the two of them just start to book it towards the three of the, the other three of the group in the parking lot. Is Ted uh, related, Lonzo, related to Uncle Ted? <laughs> Hello <laughs> Raiders! <laughs> <laughs> I think Uncle Ted gets that a lot. It's a really common name. That's why he's <laughs> Uncle Ted, so you can tell him apart. <laughs> so yeah. the witch will switch. So, Alonzo, we gotta he, go. <laughs> you um, are faced with these this cameraman and this weird History Channel guy running towards the three of them. Delilah doesn't seem to notice. Uncle Ted doesn't seem to notice. Margot, do you notice as two men run at you wildly? Hang on, is this Margot who notices? I'm asking, do you think you notice? I think she's very aware of her surroundings right now. I okay. think she would notice. All right, well then definitely you, you see these guys coming at you and one of them is yelling, Uncle Ted, Uncle Ted, please, we have some questions for you, Uncle Ted. And she's sort of like slapping Uncle Ted on the shoulder, like, um, we need a distraction. You need to distract them. You need to talk to the, um, the, the, the history channel. Got this. Okay, um, Frank, I'll see you and your family later. You guys take it easy. You too, Uncle Ted. Have a good day. Okay. Okay. Uncle Ted is prepared. Alonzo, D, what are you uh, thinking you want to do? Uh, well, I was talking to them. They were packing up. I'm going to... Let's see. Probably try to run over and intercept them. Okay. Continuing with my adamant story about Bigfoot's not even real. Come on, guys. This is no point to it. He's kind okay. of a one-trick pony. Yep. Go ahead and roll me a 3d6 because you are 
Um, you're definitely prepared and you're an expert at running, <laughs> at street racing. And you're gonna go for over your number, which was a two, right? Yep. Damn, okay, happy birthday. So you get to ask a question. Everyone's got these happy birthdays today. Uh, I'm gonna ask Uncle Ted if he told anybody else about his brother, Uncle Ed, his twin brother, who looks just like him. Maybe it was him in the uh, okay. Bigfoot mask. So um, I'll say that with, <laughs> Because you got the three, six, you have a critical success and you get an extra effect. I'll say that this extra effect is that you are able to actually outpace both the cameraman and the personality. And you are able to get to Uncle Ted first and kind of tell him a plan if that's what you want to do instead of asking me a question. Yeah, I'll take that. Cool. So uh, run over to Uncle Ted. Hey, uh, did you tell these guys about your brother? You know, it looks just like you. It's probably him in the mask. That's why you're here and Bigfoot's still out there. Heavy wink. Right. <laughs> so as this information <laughs> soaks in, the, the two gentlemen run up to you and one of them goes, Uncle Ted, Uncle Ted, are you Uncle Ted? Excuse me, I have some questions for you. And the cameraman gets in close. Okay, I'm Uncle Ted. How are you guys doing? Well, I'm Uncle gonna... Ted, we're a little confused because we've heard we're here for the Sasquatch sighting, but we've just been in told that this is kind of a classic Uncle Ted prank that you put on a wig and a mask and you roam around town. Can you confirm these allegations? How many camera crews do we have here, Evanly? Just one. Okay. Look, I would like to get into this, but I'm waiting to see who's gonna offer the most money for my story. What? That's ridiculous. Have you no integrity? I mean, I just wanna make a lot of money, that's all. I mean, that's- No one pays for Bigfoot stories anymore. We're the only channel that runs this sort of thing. No one else okay. takes it seriously. I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay, I'm... that's- Who pays you then? The, I don't know, oh, the I History could, Channel executives? Yeah, I could do that job. My job? Yeah, I, I'd like the hat, too. It he would looks suit you. The camera. That, this is ridiculous. You can't have my job. That's not what this is about. I mean, because I could, I could take the microphone and we could do like a battle, like a face-off. Like a rap battle? <laughs> I wish they could like uh, who can do the interview with Bigfoot better. So you're saying that Bigfoot is real? No, I was saying the first time I'll be Bigfoot, and then the second time you be Bigfoot, and we'll see who does a better interview, and we'll see which one, like your bosses like better. Okay, I accept. I accept your challenge. And D, Marco, as uh, this conversation is going on, you see the front door to Long John Silver's open and out walks a seven foot tall, hairy humanoid figure with a to-go bag of Long John Silver's under one arm. I, can Our I? Keys, <laughs> carbs, he's spinning around his finger on the other and he's like looking around awkwardly and beelining it to Margo, your cousin's stolen car. Can I run and rugby to tackle this Sasquatch back into the fish and chip shop, please? Absolutely, go ahead and, and make a roll. You are the brains and the driver, so I think you're only gonna get one D6 because mm -hmm. I don't think you're prepared or an expert in this. No, Marco's <laughs> panicking. You're going for reckless, so you wanna roll higher than your number. Oh, I got him that one. <laughs> yeah, so... I go and give him a hug. Uh, well, no, because it just goes wrong. <laughs> so you, uh, you, you kind of look at him and you're starting to get excited because there's the keys to your cousin's car, there's your cousin's car, there's Bigfoot, there are people here looking for Bigfoot, and as you kind of gear up to run towards him, you trip and fall face first about three feet from the start. <laughs> I mean, standard. And because of all of this racket, uh, Bigfoot looks over at you all, sees the camera, sees the group of you, and goes, oh shit, and <laughs> runs towards the car, gets in, and begins to take off. 
Can I at least try catch the car? Oh, absolutely. But you, you, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Again, this is not in my skill. I need to, I want to run and try and either jump on the car or jump on, or can, can I have help? I'd be like, Alonso, throw me <laughs> just to see if I can get thrown onto the for car. For sure. You can get an extra D6 if you want help. Um, also, Alonso could do it. So I don't really. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I would have grabbed De Delilah's hand and just sort of like dragged her over and started pointing, trying to get him to see her in the rear view mirror, but that's about all. <laughs> okay. Doesn't seem to work. He doesn't really slow down. Um, Hans, uh, Uncle Ted, the, the TV personality who is beginning to talk to you, looks at Bigfoot and then looks at you and he goes, God, and he and the camera guy run off towards their van. Um, that's my brother. <laughs> Uh, <gasps> Wait, actually, because I'm not going to be able to chase that car. Can I steal their van? Oh, absolutely. Do you want to see if you can run to their van faster? Yeah, I'm a driver. <laughs> like, that's like my one talent in this game. Yeah, I can say that you'll get two D6 for that. Okay. And that will be a... Um, I might actually say this is patient. It's a precise action that you're trying to do. So you want lower than your number, which you didn't get. Uh, so we'll say it's right. <laughs> it's, reckless. it's reckless. You're going fast. You're going for over your number. What was your number again? I can't remember. Where do I find my number? Hang on. Um, come on computer, please load now. Your number was just something you chose between two and five. Uh, two being more patient. No, sorry, five meaning you're more patient and two being more reckless. I think she's probably a three, to be okay. honest. Okay, and so you wanna roll over that, which you did do twice. So you are able to, suddenly there's this burst of energy and you are able to outpace them. You go into the driver's side of the van, which was open, the keys are in it, you start it up and you are able to take off after Bigfoot. And after you are on the road for just a few seconds, the woman behind you who has stayed in the car begins to pitch you with her clipboard. <laughs> Can I fight back? <laughs> Is there anything on the front seat? Like, has anyone got a bag of snacks or something? I can sort of. Let's see what the other three are doing first. <laughs> so you all just saw Bigfoot walk out of Long John Silver's with a doggy bag. And he jumped into the car with your presence still in it, has taken off. Margot went Super Saiyan and flew across the road, jumped into the van and has now taken off in pursuit. Um, leaving the TV personality and the cameraman stranded. What do the three of you feel? Um, I would have asked Delilah if she's got her car with her. Yeah, I do. I drive to work every day. Okay. That's awesome. Do you know where Bigfoot would have gone from here? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I know that he was planning on just staying over for the night before going on his way. We were going to have dinner because it's it's his birthday today, so... It's his birthday? Oh, that's... Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know Bigfoot had a birthday or that he would know it. Um. Well, yeah, he was born. I know, but... Okay. Well, just think really hard because we have to, so he, that car that he's in right now doesn't belong to him and it's got some important stuff in it, like some really neat stuff. And we need to kind of get it back because otherwise Margot's cousin's going to be really mad. So can we like, can you, can we borrow your car and like see if we could find Only if you promise to not let anyone film him. We, I totally promise that, right? Or, or photograph him. I can promise that. Well, none of us have our phones with us. Well, Alonso does, but it's basically almost dead anyway. So we can totally promise that. I think Alonso's phone may court. still be charging in the police car. 
<laughs> police car. That's right. Forgot about that. Yeah. Um, okay, but but D, you know, uh, Delilah tells you that she has a car and she can she can take you to it. Alonzo, Uncle Ted, what do you two want to do? Slash, what are you doing? Uh, if I'm able, if I'm able to react before uh, Margo is too far away with the camera van, I would try probably to uh, dart towards that and jump in a window or hang out at the back or something. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll. Um, I'll say you'll get your all three D6 for this, and this is definitely a reckless action, so you want to roll over your number. Um, okay, cool. So, you and your numbers are two, right? Cool. So you got two successes and a happy birthday. Do you want to ask me a question? Mm -hmm. I can't think of one right now. Okay. So no, That's I do not. You were able to succeed. So as Margot was um, driving away, she pulled out of the Safeway parking lot and you realize that the, the side door was actually open and you are able to very quickly, as she kind of stalls in the middle of the street before going forward, you are able to dive into the van. And just as you dive in, this woman begins to hit Margot with her clipboard. Uh, Margot Alonzo has, has joined you in the van. He dove in, and so he's witnessing this woman assault you with her clipboard. Uncle Ted, what are you wanting to do? Um, Uncle Ted's walking alongside Dee and is trying to get her attention. Dee, Dee. What? Look, I have a theory. I was thinking about this. Okay, it's Bigfoot's birthday. Yeah. And it's Clementine's birthday. Yeah. What if Clementine's Bigfoot? <laughs> Uncle Ted's like, I connected them. And Dee's like, you haven't connected shit. No. My research says that that's probably not it. But it's a good thought. Keep that on the back burner. Right now, we just have to catch up with Margo and the car and the camera and everything. Okay. We got a car, though. I mean, I know we could use Kevin's car, but I know that backseat in the police cars are really, really uncomfortable, like for a reason. So maybe we should just take Delilah's car. Yeah. Also, I owe him 20 bucks. So let's take Delilah's car. Good plan. We'll take Delilah Lila's car over towards her car, which was parked in a very convenient location. And uh, she says, "Do you want me to go with you guys, or are you, you guys going on your own?" How much you can you come with us if you ship? want. Okay. She hops into the driver's side seat, uh, starts the car, and if when, as soon as you all get in, she's going to take off after the van. Um, Margo, Alonzo, you are in this van. Margo, you are being hit with a clipboard from a woman who is like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. This is theft. And every time she's kind of punctuating her words with a with a flap of the clipboard. And this is abuse. Like, and I start trying to like, it. I'm not a very strong individual. So I'm kind of like slapping pathetically at her to try stop, but also try to keep my eye on the road at the same time. I would probably, as soon as I was able to right myself from diving into the van, be trying to grab the clipboard from the lady. Hey, hey, she's driving. Don't hit her, we'll crash. I think you can do this without a roll. You're able to wrestle the clipboard from her. And she sits back. You see that the back of the van has been kind of outfitted as a, as a watch station. There are some chairs and some monitors and stuff. And she sits back and she's like, this is ridiculous. I do not get paid enough for this. What are you doing stealing our van? I am trying... borrowing without permission. That's We're silly. trying to make it to a birthday party. It's very important. I'm sure you understand. I do not understand. Please do not assume that I understand any of this. I'm going to keep my eyes on the road like a good driver and I turn around and I start driving faster. She kind of sighs and decides to ignore you. Margo, you can see the car, your cousin's car, up in front of you, and you are able to track it very well. I will go ahead and have you roll um, for street racing. 
Right. And you'll get 3d6 in this because you're, you get your basic one, you're definitely prepared, and you're an expert at this. Okay. I put my foot down. This is reckless, so you want to go above four. You got two successes. So you are able to keep up with him very easily. Can I pull alongside? Absolutely. Not yeah, I'm pulling alongside, and I'm looking at Alonso like... <laughs> I know that signal. That means it's time for me to do something risky. <laughs> so uh, the van is Marco it one of the pulled the van up alongside alongside Bigfoot. So the passenger side is against the driver's side, uh, which means that the sliding door is also against the side of the car that's facing Bigfoot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna brace myself. I'm gonna open the door. Um, is the are the windows down on the car that Bigfoot's driving? Mm, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna dive in head first. Not okay. I'll say not the windows, but the uh, the moon roof is open. The sunroof. All right. Then, then maybe uh, not head first. Go ahead. Give me give me a three d six reckless action. Your number is two, so you want above that. You got a happy birthday. Do you have any questions you want to ask? Um. Are the presents still in the car? Yes. That's good enough for me. We're halfway there. All right. You are able to dive into the sunroof of the car and you went head first, but you, you were able to land in such a way that you upend yourself perfectly into the passenger side. And because you got three successes, you get an extra effect. And that is that as you, um, as you roll into the car, your knee hits the the shifty thing that makes the car go vroom vroom and it goes into park and the car all of a sudden lurches to a stop and you kind of skid out for a little bit but you don't lose control of the car. Margo, you see the car come to a very fast stop behind you and you quickly outpace it. D and Uncle Ted, Delilah is driving a little bit above the speed limit. She's clearly not racing, but you are able to see the van and Margot's cousin's car up ahead of you. And you see the cousin's car come to a stop and Margot begins to decelerate as well. Okay, here's my plan. We text Bigfoot and we tell him to get in Delilah's car and leave us Margot's car, Margot's cousin's car. Okay. So smart. So you want Delilah to text Bigfoot? I'm not sure I ever gave Delilah back her phone. Okay. So you want to text Bigfoot? Message sent. Okay. <laughs> what did the message say? It said, how about you get in my car? All right. Um, Alonzo, you are sitting there maybe a little reeling from what just happened and all of a sudden Bigfoot throws open the, the door, the driver's side door, and begins running towards a car that is approaching you from behind. Margo, what are you doing? The car, you have just outpaced the car as the car has come to a very sudden stop. She's trying to do that, you know, pull up the handbrake, spin round, and go okay. in front of it. Um, okay. Ridiculous driving sort of thing. All right. Go ahead, go ahead and roll me 3d6 for this reckless roll. You want to get over your number of four. Cool. Um, I'll one. You got one success. So you are able to do the, whatever this is that you're trying to do, but there is going to be a complication. You, as you kind of flip the car and, and roll around, you begin to wiggle a little bit and you tip over the TV van and the woman in the backseat is like, ah! <laughs> like, it's okay, it's okay. If you have a seatbelt on, you'll be okay. As we sort she of did go not over. have a seatbelt on and she smacks her head against the other side of the car and goes unconscious, but she's not dead. She's just like, oh. should have had a seatbelt on. But you had a seatbelt on, so you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> Learn, kids. <laughs> D, you are sitting in, were you sitting in the back seat or the passenger side seat? Huh, I mean, there we go. Uh, I would have been sitting in the passenger seat. Okay. The little car you were sitting in the passenger seat when all of a sudden you see Bigfoot racing towards you. 
I sort of freeze. Oh my god, he's there. He is. It's so close. Oh, I should get. What do I do? I should get. Uh, I... Uncle Ted opens the back door of the car. <laughs> okay. Bigfoot slidles in next to you, Uncle Ted. He slams the door and he goes, "Go, go, 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 go!" And Deli Delilah takes off. Alonzo, you are now in this abandoned car and you have just seen Bigfoot reach this additional car, get in the back and it takes off. And as it's driving past you, you see that Dee and Uncle Ted are in the car. Right, um, <laughs> <My way. laughs> I'm going to get out of Alice's, I'm sorry, um, Margo's cousin's car, go check on Margo. Basically pull her out of the sideways van and I'm tell okay. her, they're I'm going, okay. we got to follow. <laughs> And maybe wave to the news lady, the History Channel lady. I'd like to put her in the recovery position and then go, please. <laughs> All right, you do it. Like, I'm going to fully turn like, her cousin's no. car. <laughs> Are you taking your cousin's car? Oh, yeah. She's getting straight back in that car and she's like, check the presents, like, to make sure, like, nothing's been stolen either. All of the presents are there, but there is, like, a ton of hair in the car. She's like, oh, she's gonna And it kind of smells a little bit like wet dog. And marijuana. <laughs> so. That's, that's <laughs> In my car, <laughs> like, it's like sort of I try and brush all this hair off of um, the seat and sit down. I'm wearing knitted stuff, like that stuff sticks. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have issues for sure. Well, yeah. do, you, do you want to chase this, the car? Yeah, I think I think Margot yells at Alonzo, seatbelts, and then puts her, her, her foot down on the accelerator to go after them. All right, give me that reckless roll. See how well you're reckless able roll. to keep up. Okay. okay. One though. Cool. You succeed. You are able to keep up, but you aren't able to make pace with the car. You're you're always just going to be a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. D, uh, Uncle Ted, what are you two doing? I turn all, like, as far as I can turn from the passenger side to, oh my gosh. Hi, I'm D. It is so nice to meet you. Um, I hear it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh my gosh. So, is it rude? How old are you today? Um, I don't mean to be rude. I just, I'm just such a fan. He looks at you and he looks kind of happy that you just said happy birthday, but also a little uneasy with the attention. And he says, I'm not gonna tell you how old I am. You're right, I'm sorry. That was very rude of me. I'm just, I, so, I, what, did you have big plans for your birthday though? No, I don't really ever have any plans for my birthday because I don't have any friends except for Delilah. Well, that's really sad. I mean, you know, I, you know, you should come into town more. You could, there's a lot of people who think you're really cool. You could have friends if you wanted. I could be your friend. No, you know, it's dangerous. People can't know about me or, I don't know, but I've always wanted to attend a party. You do? Yeah, but I've never been able to, but I've read about birthday parties and I've watched uh, my all-time favorite movie is I'm trying to think of a really ridiculous movie about a birthday party. Sixteen Candles. <laughs> you had that way too yeah. quick. <laughs> my all-time favorite movie is Sixteen Candles. But I've always, you know, wanted to go to a birthday party and. Well, oh my gosh! First of all, Sixteen Candles, great movie. Although, like, there's some things about it that like hit a little close to home Super for me, really. That I just yeah, there's some yeah. very problematic themes in it. I totally agree. Yeah, just it, you know, there's some terrible themes in it. It didn't, <laughs> but but oh oh, I have an idea. You could we're going to a birthday party. I don't know if you noticed that there were presents in that car that you stole. No, I didn't. Really? Because they're they're kind of, they're kind of like piled up, and they were kind of all over. Well, anyway, so we were going to a birthday party. You should come with us. Really? I am. I'm, I'm invited. Well, you could be like you and Delilah. You could be like 
Uncle Ted's other like <laughs> other like family members. He looks back at like you, Uncle out. Ted. And he's like, could I? Could I be one of your family members? Uncle Ted is pushed so far to the side in this car seat. <laughs> he is squished to like a sliver of a man up against the door of this car by this gigantic Sasquatch. He says, yeah, yeah. okay, first, yeah. Um, but we can't wear the same shirt because we're practically twins. Well, I don't, I don't have shirts. I'm naked. Do you want to borrow my shirt? We could play a practical joke and you could say your Uncle Ted. I don't understand that type of humor, but I'm I'm willing to try it. Okay. That would be also so call me funny. Uncle Ted. Well, then you can call me Uncle Quiche. I don't think that's Quiche. how it works, but that's okay. What? You can't just tell people to call you Uncle something. That's weird. Is that not what you did? You literally what? just told me to call you Uncle Ted. It's because he's Uncle Ted. That's his name. Your name is Uncle? Yeah, Uncle Ted. Is your name Uncle? Look, if I had my license, it was in my fanny pack in that car you stole, I would show you. It says Uncle Ted. Well, the car is right there behind us, and he gestures, and you can barely see, uh, probably not you, Dee, but definitely Uncle Ted. You can see that Margo is definitely catching up. She's quite close behind you. Uh, Uncle Ted can't turn around. He's so squished. <laughs> You could like kind of turn your head. In my face. There's, there's her in his mouth. He's like, puh, 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 puh. <laughs> no offense, oh, man. Yeah. Just puh. Wait, did you say they were following us? Yeah. Well, that's good because we shouldn't probably show up to a birthday party without birthday presents. And that was sort of the whole point of us like following you in the first place is because you had our birthday presents. And also Margot's car, which is like super like her or Margot's cousin's car, and her cousin would get really angry if like Margot didn't come back with the car. It's a whole thing. I'm sorry that I stole your presents, Mom. Do you want to pull over so we can talk to your friends about the party? That's probably a good idea, Bigfoot. You're so smart. I didn't think like I know, like I I you know because you're so quiet and stuff, and people don't think you're real like I wouldn't have thought of you as being that smart but you're so smart do you want me to just text Alonzo I could just text Alonzo Alonzo doesn't have his phone though it's in the cop car oh darn well so much for Uncle Ted's fine he hasn't figured that out yet though (laughs) that's true you could text Alonzo and it definitely would he just wouldn't respond oh Oh, now Kevin's gonna show up um okay Delilah pulls to the side of the road Margo you see that the car to the side of the road. So I, I flip the indicator and I slowly <laughs> indicate off to park behind. <laughs> All right. You you come to a stop behind the car, and as you come to a stop, Bigfoot gets out of the car and kind of stretches and looks at you. Ooh, on his hips. <laughs> and I'm assuming we're alive. What was that? I'm assuming I can see my friends are alive. <laughs> yes, you can see your friends are. Uncle Ted is also stretching, but in the car. I wind down the window because it's one of those. It's an older yeah. car, so it's a really <laughs> quick window. It's like, and I lean out. She doesn't really know what to do. So, Greetings, Bigfoot. Um, Hi. how's it going? Uh, one of your friends invited me to the birthday party. Isn't that a great idea? It's his birthday and it's Clementine's birthday and we should just have the party for them together. He's never had a birthday party. Isn't that sad? I feel like that's so depressing. You've never had a birthday party? No. Oh, then you should definitely come. Uncle Ted said that he's going to give me his shirt and he looks at you, Uncle Ted, in the car. (laughs) (laughs) Um, he puts you can't go to a party underdressed. And it immediately shreds. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark's like, looks great. Looks real great. He's like still wearing it. It's kind of barely held together at the the shoulders, but the arms have shred and the back has split open. It's like, just look, he, and he has to button it and it does that thing when you button a shirt that's too small <laughs> where there are all the like, gaps between the buttons. Looks just like yes. Uncle Ted. <laughs> Hey. It's great. 
Oh, um, eat twins. Can't tell the difference. It's amazing. Margo, do you wanna do you wanna lead us to the party, and Delilah and uh, your friends and I will follow you. I can do that. I can do that. And sort of like, I'm um, again like, is it? sort of. Um, she's got all the presents and everything in the back. And she's like, follow me. And then she indicates, checks her mirrors, goes. Okay. Bigfoot gets back in the car. Delilah pulls up behind you and you all head to Clementine's where you have a very lovely time. Clementine is so thrilled that you could all make it. It's a super poppin' party. Uh, people ask not enough questions about Bigfoot, which really makes you kind of wonder about everyone's state. But Bigfoot is able to celebrate his birthday and congratulations, you all have recovered your stolen car with your friend's birthday present inside and you gave Bigfoot a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yay. I'd like to split the present in half as well so Bigfoot can have one. Okay, which which present do you give him? What did everyone get? First now we of all? have to know, yeah. yeah. I, I, got, I got a pair of socks, like real well, nice really socks, they can have one each. Let's roll like, <laughs> Let's do one through four. So D will be one, Alonzo two, Marco three, Uncle Ted four, and we'll see which gift Bigfoot gets. Oh, I thought you were just giving him one individual song. I was. <laughs> I, was. Oh, um, <laughs> I was gonna say maybe Bigfoot gets D's gift. D, what did you get for Clementine? I got uh, little plushies that look almost like they were hamsters, but they don't have any faces. They're just kind of like around fluffy plushies maybe like, like a certain bean? Um, you basically got her plushy kidney beans no think more like a triple <laughs> multiple triples okay there alonzo what did you get clementine you got clementine her very own dalek Bluetooth oh. speaker i hope she likes it clementine's gonna and type margo you got clementine <laughs> socks yeah, home knitted, like the hat. Okay. And Uncle Ted, what did you get, Clementine? Uncle Ted's present takes up the entire trunk. He got a chainsaw carving of a bear that says, Happy Birthday. <laughs> I love it so much. I want one. <laughs> no, no one wants that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all such good gifts, and uh, everyone has such a good time. Bigfoot takes his one sock that you grace. Gra graciously uh, give to him Margo and he puts it on his his hand and I think that's the end of our weird, our weird little campaign <laughs> literally Bigfoot and I got him a sock <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> absolutely wonderful um, so that's wonderful thank you thank you very much <laughs> I, I love this I love this game I'd like to point out that Alonzo still doesn't think it's Bigfoot yeah, I just think it's like a Wookiee. <laughs> Uncle Quiche. <laughs> yeah. I, will... I have a real big question, though. So, Heavenly, did you just run a game that features Bigfoot in which Bigfoot was not in a relationship? I did, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. gosh. Whoa. Mind blowing. So strange. There seemed to be like a, a situation ship with Delilah there. <laughs> True. Definitely. For those I not mean... aware, you know. Oh, I was going to say, we've got, you have your own podcast about this. I know about, yeah. dating, about dating cryptids, but I just, felt like, I just felt like I didn't want Bigfoot's happiness to be contingent on Delilah. You know, I kind of wanted Bigfoot That's to be right. like his own character. Like he can love cool himself. Kind of so maybe, maybe next time we play this, Bigfoot will have a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. D will have spent the entire party time. just following Bigfoot around, by the way. Of course, of course. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Um, what I will do as um, this is a view game, we'll go around and just say hi, where we can find you, and if you had a favorite part of this game, please let us know. And we'll start with the very lovely Hans. Oh, oh I have hi. to start. Okay. Um, hello. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here next week, so I'll see you then. <laughs> so that'll be good. Um, my favorite part was Heavenly's suggestion that we play this game in the first place, because again, this is very much what I would associate with her in general. So it was very good. Wonderful, thank you. And then we're gonna hop down uh, to Blue Box Pirate. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Uh, this was ridiculous amounts of fun and <laughs> I'm so glad I was able to join you all. Um, I think my favorite part of this is, I mean, all of it was great, but the title alone is just fantastic. <laughs> oh, dang, 
Bigfoot stole my car and my friend's birthday present was in it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, for those who haven't seen me before, I'm Blue Box Pirate. You can follow me there on Twitter. Mostly I'll tweet Dungeons and Dragons related stuff. And as of recently, it's a lot of retweets from Straticus. I've been lurking on the Twitch all the time. If you want to find me and chat with me when I'm there. Wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Um, then we're going to hop over to the Lady Game. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I'm the Lady Dame. Um, you can find me at the Lady Dame on Twitter, Twitch, and, you know, discords and things. Um, mostly I'm like on every other Monday, I'm on the Goldheart Gaming channel and their Descent into Avernus campaign, which is super fun. Um, and yeah, occasionally you'll find me streaming on my own channel as well when I, but it's super, super late at night on Pacific time. So there's that. Um, doing a variety of things and my favorite part oh there's so many because this was a very silly silly game um i have to say i loved margo indicating every time she moved the car like a very responsible driver <laughs> wonderful thank you um and last but certainly not least heavenly oh hi hello i am heavenly you can find me on twitter at that is my real name that is spelled t-h-t I also host a podcast called Monster Crush, where we talk about cryptids, monsters, aliens, and whether or not we want to smooch them. And you can find that at Monster Crushing. We just posted an episode today, and there'll be another one in two weeks. And I am very thankful that everyone wanted to do this game. I've been, the cold has been going around at my work, and I've just been feeling really foggy brained. And so I didn't feel capable of doing a full three hour campaign. And so everyone was very kind and accommodating kind of like a quick, silly one shot that I wouldn't have to prep. And I'm very thankful for everyone bringing just their A game to this ridiculous, ridiculous game. I loved everyone's characters. I loved how everyone played them, but I really loved uh, Alonzo just being willing to chase everyone and <laughs> like tackle them. If you're good at one thing, use it. Exactly, yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm Alice or White Rabbit Pick um, on Twitter. Um, I have a Patreon. Look at me remembering that. I have a Patreon. So please, um, I do photography yeah. stuff as well, so please go check that out. I'm also a DM and player, another half of this channel. Um, my favorite bit was just I just love shenanigans. I love spontaneous shenanigans and seeing what people are going to do. And when you involve big foot, it just gets that much better. Um, so. Other than that, please check out the links that are coming up in chat now. That includes um, our Twitter. Um, if you want to get in a game, drop Scrat a DM. Also, Discord. We'd love to hear what you think. And of course, if you've missed anything, please go check um, us out on YouTube. All the playlists for all the games are over there. A huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors um, in the form of Mayhem Press. Um, their Dark Matter is now out in hardback copy. It's amazing. If you like D&D and you like space, you smush them together and that is Dark Matter and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Also Hero Forge, the minis, they've um, smashed their goals and more and more exciting things are coming um, from all of these new goals to achieve. And last but certainly not least, the Deck of Many with the Deck of Many uh, things. The mu uh, blah, 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 blah magic moving spell cards and also um, a super um, wholesome d and the Humblewood, which may be coming to the channel next season. Um, otherwise, keep evoking emotions and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.